Hi, I am Teresa Cyrus at Track Creation for E, where we explore, experiment, and execute effectively. Today, I want to talk about team meetings, recordings, and auto exploration in OneDrive and SharePoint. In August, Microsoft announced that all team meeting recordings will now have auto expiration date. What does this mean to the end user? The information that I'm covering is based on Microsoft documentation. By the end of this session, you will understand what the feature does, who is impacted, where the media files are stored, and some additional key factors that improves the user experience. Once um, audio expiration feature is rolled out in November, all Microsoft team meeting recordings are no longer being saved to stream. Instead, the medium files are stored in a recordings folder for a set time period before it moves to the recycle bin. Keep in mind, when files are moved to the recycle bin, they are considered as deleted. When a recording is published, the media file is stored in either OneDrive for Business for non-channel meetings. Non-channel refers to your personal or small ad hoc group meetings that you are a host of. And these meetings are not tied to a team site. And as shown in this slide, this screenshot is Adele's personal, personal OneDrive files. OneDrive files and all recording meetings are stored in the recordings folder. Whereas a team channel is a group of people collaborating on a project and the team has weekly or monthly meetings, all team related recordings are stored in the appropriate SharePoint team site as shown in the images. Now, Anytime a meeting is recorded, a default period is set, which is based on your Microsoft 365 license. For an example, the enterprise sub subscribers default setting is 60 days and 30 days for academic licenses. Now, the good news is users can change the expiration date. In addition, IT system administrator can override auto expiry date to align with any legal compliance policies. So you do have some flexibility modifying the auto expiration date. Who is impacted? Anyone who starts a recording in the MS Teams application is impacted by this new rollout and this new feature. So make sure you share this information with your team. They need to understand the remaining details in this presentation. And you know, you don't want them come or looking for a recording that has been deleted in 30 or 60 days. Why did Microsoft make this change for recordings? One, some of you may remember that Microsoft had stored media files on streams, which were disconnected from Microsoft Teams, OneDrive, and SharePoint. We had to create a separate team site for videos and apply permissions. Managing streams was a duplicate effort for end users and for IT. And so Microsoft finally simplified the video management process. Now the videos will be stored with the media owner and the relevant channel. Second, Microsoft was concerned about storing massive amounts of large, unnecessary videos on OneDrive and channel SharePoint sites. Each one hour video is approximately 400 megabytes in size. And in today's working environment, we are encouraged to record our team meetings this way, our team can review the session if he or she is not is unable to attend. So you can imagine the amount of recorded videos that one company may have. Third, based on client feedback and survey, Microsoft learned that 99% of team videos loses importance and are not rewatched after two months. I was surprised by seeing 99%. I would have thought 80, but 99% um, was pretty high. Lastly, the auto expiration change was driven by good housekeeping um, best practices versus content appliance, um, compliance purposes. 
I will share from my own experience. I was part of a project to transition all media files from a designated server to streams. We literally had thousands of videos. There were many outdated videos going back as far as 15 years. We were unable to identify the video owners for some of them had left the company or no longer with the originated department. Many videos related to projects that were closed and was no longer needed. Um, some of the team members had even forgotten that they, the video had even exist. Um, we had duplicate videos where other teams had copied the videos for easy access. So with my IT hat on, I support Microsoft's decision to um, set guidelines for limited time, one purpose videos. Let's talk about what happens when you record a meeting in a non-channel workspace. Aaron is on a call with Adele. The person who presses the start recording button is the primary media asset owner. And the file is downloaded and stored on Aaron's OneDrive for Business recordings folder. Now, what's nice is that if a meeting organizer sets the calendar event but did not start the recording, she or he is still the co-owner of that recording. So who has access to the recording which is located on Aaron's, the primary owner's OneDrive? The internal um, invitees, these are your coworkers, will be granted view access with down without download capabilities instantly. They can rewatch the videos within the default 60 days or whatever the specific time frame. Whereas external attendees, these may be your clients, do not have immediate access to the recording unless the owners grant external participants access. Both primary and co-owners have edit, delete access immediately. They can change permission settings. Just know that anyone is um, given edit and delete access can also complete the following actions. They can share files with others. They can change auto expiration and they can move and copy the recordings to a new location. So it's important to grant edit, delete permissions wisely. The auto expiration dates behaves differently when any video content are moved or copied. So when moving a recording, the expiration settings move also and the recording is deleted when it, um, when it expires. Whereas copying a recording to a new location, the expiration date field is cleared and the recording will not be deleted. And if you download or upload a recording, an expiration date is unassigned, so you must manually sign um, an expiration date to it. I mentioned earlier that you have the flexibility to modify the auto expiration date. Let's say your meetings are held every quarter and your preference is to keep the recordings for 120 days instead of 60 days. Well, you can change it to 14, 30, 60 days, or you can add your own custom date and even select never to expire. The safe minimal and maximal date values are one day to up to 9,999 days, which is about 27 years. So you got a lot of time. Will I be notified before the media asset is moved to the recycle bin or in other words, deleted? And the answer is yes. Before recording is moved to the recycle bin, um, a two week notice appears in several places. In this image, I don't show the actual message, but a notice will appear next to the recording in a chat pane, so anyone with view access sees the expiration date. A red button um, or red icon also appears next to a file in OneDrive for Business. Um, Microsoft made sure to say there is no list column with the expiration date, so you cannot filter or sort on um, expiry dates. 
And lastly, the video owner, owner receives an email when the files moves to or deleted from the recycle bin. When the recording moves to the recycle bin from the primary owner's OneDrive, um, the expiration date counter is now cleared. In addition, the following items are also deleted. Um, the tabs for both recordings and the supporting transcripts are removed from the Microsoft Calendar event, and the recordings are no longer searchable. And yes, the media owner and the IT system administrator can restore a recording from the recycle bin. So notice in this image, the recycle bin tells you when the files were deleted, by who, in this case, by the system. And it also provides the location of the file before it is deleted. Now, that's going to be handy um, to you uh, when it's time to restore the content because it's going to go back to that original location. So let's talk about what happens when you record a meeting in a team channel workspace. So the, the information that you see on the screen, the slide shows the standard audio expiration settings that are common to both non-channel and two channel workspaces. The only difference is the recycle bin files are saved with the associated channel um, SharePoint site. So let me cover how the auto expiration impacts channel specifically. When recording and publishing a meeting in a channel environment, the folder name depends on the channel access settings configured by the channel creator. So before I show the next two images, take note of the type of access and the channel folder's name. If your channel security is configured for view and download access, the recordings are saved to the channel recordings folder, whereas the view only access stores the files in the channel recording slash video only folder. So they made it very clear on which folder um, these um, videos will be stored. Now, if a channel has view and download access, just like non-channel settings, the person who starts the recording is the media asset owner and is given edit rights to the recording. And access for all other members is based on the SharePoint permissions, again, set by the channel creator. Now, in this permission, uh, permission structure, some users may have read-only access with no download activity, um, um, capabilities. Others may have edit access where they can view, edit, and download the recordings. So here's my recommendation to channel um, owners. If your team records many meetings and you are not part of the meetings, train and designate a meeting recorder to minimize the number of random owners um, for these um, recordings. Now with view only access, it is much simpler to manage. Um, it doesn't matter who starts the recording. The channel owner has full control of all recordings and all the channel members will have read only access to the recordings until the expiration date. Really simple. Here's my first take on the team meetings recordings auto expiration in OneDrive and SharePoint. It's all about ensuring you and your team members have the best user experience. Channel owners, you know all the questions and issues will fall in your lap. So once this feature is rolled out in November, take 15 minutes, inform your team with the following. Discuss the new recording features like the person who starts the recording is the media asset owner in a non-channel workspace or a view and download team channel site. Share that the recordings are automatically deleted after 60 days unless it is changed. Make sure that the media owner understands the behaviors when moving and copying files. 
I recommend that you identify the most skillful and appropriate person as a recorder in channels with view and download access. That's just going to keep things simpler. Um, they kind of understand what's going on and show them how to change the expiration date when needed, where the recycle bin is on OneDrive and on the SharePoint site. Um, by the way, the content I cover today do not apply to recordings prior to the November rollout. So no need to worry about existing videos that you have on OneDrive or in SharePoint. Here's my final takeaway. The automation to set expiration dates and content deletion is a long-term management time saver for channel owners, members, and IT professionals when managing limited time, one purpose recordings. Uh, we encourage our team members to record meetings for many reasons to keep absent members um, informed or for learning purposes, just to name a few. However, some companies may have content retention policies and when it's time to review the meeting recordings, usually IT professionals and channel um, owners are involved then we pull in our team members because we don't know if the video um, is still relevant five days ago or even five years ago. So selfishly, um, again, I support Microsoft Change. So kudos, Microsoft. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this information helpful. Please let me know how you feel about this change um, with the team meeting recordings.